Hi there, Graham from Penguin Motors here. Uh, today, leaning on my P6 here, I'm gonna talk about the engine from Hughes P6 above. Here's Hughes engine, finally out of the car, on an engine stand, ready for final strip down. I've already pulled the timing cover off, but I thought I'd show a common, should we say, V8 Rover weakness. Something they're famed for, and that's a worn timing chain. If you look down here at the timing chain assembly, two sprockets and a chain. How simple is that? No tension or anything. And as you can see, there is a considerable amount of slack in the chain. They're famed for it. Everyone knows they wear out. And as the chain wears out, it retards the timing on both the camshaft and the ignition. You can compensate for the ignition timing by advancing the timing, but still the camshafts are retired. Now, just out of interest i thought i'd show you what they look like with the new chain so i'm going to pull this off here okay so there's a new chain and we can see there's a lot less play but there's still a considerable amount Everyone will show you how sloppy a worn out chain is, but even a new one isn't very tight. Obviously, if we had new sprockets, it would be slightly tighter than that, but it would only be slightly. So having showed you new timing chain on the old sprockets, when this engine actually goes back together, it's gonna to go together with an uprated double roller chain. So, as you can see now, with a Cloy's roller chain on it, there's far less slack. The valve timing will stay precise for a lot longer. In fact, this timing set has multiple slots, keyways in it. So by turning pulleys in relation to the other, we can actually vary the timing of the camshaft and dial it in where it is best suited. That's the keyway lines a sprocket on a crankshaft. The uprated chain has three keyways which are slightly offset so by varying the position when you install it you actually change the time of the cam to get it optimum. This engine is actually typical of a lot of older engines. Quite a common conversation I have with people they say well can you just open it up and have a look and maybe freshen it up a little. And quite often I say, are you sure you want me to open the engine up? Because you might find a lot of wear inside. At which point the customer uses, oh no, it runs all right. It doesn't make any odd noises or whatever. I don't think it'll need much. And frequently they need a lot. Some engines mask wear incredibly well. These Rovers being one of them. So at this point, I'm gonna whip the cam out and uh, we're gonna see some very worn cam lobes. This is a camshaft, and these are cam lobes. Essentially, as it rotates, it pushes on a push rod up and down, pushes a rocker, and opens a valve. So the shape and height of these are critical to the engine running. So here we have a reasonably healthy looking cam lobe. It's no undue wear, and if we point in there, it looks a reasonable shape. This front lobe, you see it? It's clearly looking a bit flat. This one back here, that is an example of severe wear. If we look at some of the cam followers, you can see all these nasty pits here. This is where the followers worn away and the hard surface has disappeared in chunks. That is a relatively unworn cam follower. I say relatively. The camera probably won't see up, but it is slightly dished. When they're new, they're actually slightly convex. You won't see it with the eye, but they are slightly round. And that is to help them rotate in use. This one is absolutely mullered. As you can see, there's a deep dish in it. It's unbelievable, but it actually sounded okay. And it drove all right, and yet clearly it's got severe issues. What I'm gonna do next 
is deglaze the cylinder bores. And what that means is effectively is roughen the surface up slightly. That gives new piston rings a nice surface to seal on. They need a slightly rough finish. The finish has to be the right amount of roughness. Too rough, it wears the rings out. Too fine, and it doesn't hold any oil. The bores themselves, you can get technical and use measuring equipment, and I have lots of different measuring equipment. But the finger actually makes a really good tool. If you can run a finger and a finger nail around it, and you can't feel any steps or lumps, they go again. My finger tells me there's no great wear in these, so we can just hone the, hone the cylinder a little, remove the polish, give a nice surface for the rings to bed into, rather than having to have the engine reboard, i.e. the cylinders made bigger to take bigger oversized pistons. To hone it, I'm gonna use a flexi hone, which is an American tool, a little bit messy, and it puts grit inside the engine, which is actually why I'm doing it before the engine's cleaned. It's still in its dirty state. So what we need, a bit of oil, the honing tool, which we spin up, insert, run up and down. The speed of the drill and the speed of the up and down movement needs to be correct to give the right sort of finish. With practice, you can get there. Clean it down, wipe it. And I can see I need to do a little bit more. Got my air gun in hand. I'm just going to buzz off the last of the main buried caps so we can lift the caps off, see if they all look as bad as the one we've already looked at. Ugh. We can lift the crank out and we can clean the block and measure the crankshaft properly. Air tools, I love them. Oh, look at that. Bit of lead and a bit of copper. Unfortunately, it should be lead all the way around, no copper. All copper. More copper. First one was the best so far. Number one, it's only got bearings one side of it, not both. Oh, a bit like when you put one bit of toast in the toaster. Yes. No. Oh. Shell stuck in the engine. More copper. And now we can just lift the crankshaft out. He man, ready for a wash now. Sitting in the block's gonna have a little bath. Well, it's ready for a bath. <laughs> These are main bearing caps. So it's best to wash it with them back in. They need they need cleaning. And by me putting them back, they're less likely to get mixed up because bearing caps have to go in the correct place and the correct way round. The only thing I've got to do here is ideally take this off the stand. take the mount off and then it is ready to have a bath. The largest dishwasher you've ever seen, James. The largest dishwasher in the West. Well, I don't know about that, but certainly probably the largest dishwasher you've seen. Now, Graham, what you were just saying about dishwasher there reminds me of a comment that your um, mother-in-law would mention about how you used to put engine parts in your dishwasher at home. Is this true? Yeah, domestic dishwashers, um, probably more likely gearbox parts, but yeah. Domestic dishwashers are actually excellent for cleaning engines no. because essentially um, the industrial washer I've got here uses hot water with detergent in it and a rotating spray. It's a dishwasher, not the chip fryer. <laughs> you know, fry your chips in there. Fortunately, this being a V8 Rover engine, the block is aluminium and relatively light. This has been an American small block Chevy. 
I'd have three hernias by now. Have a nice wash. If I stop it quick and open it, you'll see the um, cleaning lance going round. See, that is just like opening your dishwasher when it's still running. Even smells like it. Hot water and detergent. The, the hardest thing for either a small shop or an amateur to do in terms of energy building is actually get it clean enough. It used to be, I used to spend more time and effort and chemicals and things trying to clean engine components than I often used to do building the actual engine. If an engine needs to work well and give, live a long life, it needs to be scrupulously clean when it goes back together.